What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be taking a look at some new arrivals and some restocks for DLT trading. It's been a bit. It's been well over a month since we've looked at DLT and there is an absolute ton of new stuff that I know a lot of you guys will want to check out. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Uh, links for these pages will be right down below so that you guys can check them out if you want to. If you want to hang out with me and hear my commentary, great. If you don't want to, you can just go to these pages and check this stuff out for yourself. Uh, but this will be uploaded very quickly after I record it, so a lot of this will still be in stock. Just a few minutes ago, they dropped a bunch of new Kunwu knives. I am really happy that DLT Trading picked up Kunwu, and the reason is, is Kunwu is great. They offer excellent knives, excellent heat treat, excellent cutting geometry, excellent value. I mean, really just one of the best uh, knife companies across the board when it comes to dollar for dollar getting what you, uh, you know, are paying for. Um, but ordering from Kunwu, it takes a bit, right? So uh, you can still do that, and I've got links for Kunwu down there, but ordering it from DLT means you guys can get your stuff within just a few days. So. Uh, the new carbon fiber uh, DLC uh, Pulsar, these are the reflective or shiny DLC, so if you've been looking for something like that, it's there. Um, the regular Pulsars, we have the carbon fiber X Tau. These uh, blade steels, by the way, will vary between LMAX, Vanax, uh, a couple of other things, but the heat treat, most importantly, if you're not familiar with Kunwu, Kunwu is getting the heat treat on point. Very, very good, and very good cutting geometry to boot. So you're not just getting that hardness, you're also getting a super slicey blade with almost any model. Um, absolutely. And some of these, you know, like the Mini Tau are, I don't know why they've listed this as carbon fiber, it's clearly titanium. Um, but uh, some of these are really not all that expensive. In the case of the more expensive ones, oftentimes the reason for it is going to be because the steel is Vanax, as you can see right there, which is 100% one of my favorite steels of all time. I was hoping to catch this before it sold out, the new Magna Cut. It's such a weird combination of things, um, but Zero Tolerance released the o uh, 0350 in Magna Cut, Tiger Stripe, and I think maybe OD or Coyote, uh, but apparently they're sold out, so... We've got some Jeff Davidson geckos coming soon. I'm not familiar with them. The Chavez RCK9 is a brand new model to me. I don't know anything about that, but I am going to take a look here at the size. And it's a 7-inch knife. I really wish that they would do some more full-size stuff. I know some people like the smaller stuff, and if you do, that's great. But personally, I like to see the larger stuff. Custom Combat Troodon. Holy moly. Boker Kalashnikov button locks in D2. Those have been around for just a bit. I've had a couple of those. They're all right. I mean, it feels like the Kalashnikov is just a button lock. Kershaw Livewire in Magna Cut. That's still one of the best American double action OTFs on the market. Do not shy away from this. I mean, basically what I'm saying is if you've been looking at the um, Axial Shift, the Guardian Tactical Recon 35, uh, and or the Microtech Ultratech, you need to throw the Livar into the running because it is absolutely on par and it has the best price tag of the bunch. Actually, I think it's pretty much tied with the uh, Axial Shift, maybe? I can't remember. Some new Heretic Clerics 2, uh, Heretic Cleric 2s. Those are huge double action OTFs and the action is very, very good. Moving on here, some other pouches. Oh, the Swiss Army Swiss Tool MX is back in stock. I don't think a lot of people know about it. That is the most premium feeling multi-tool that I have ever handled. I have one and it is absolutely one of my favorites and not bad for the money. A bunch of S90V uh, 187 DPTs, which is probably the best Medford buy dollar for dollar. Like if you're gonna buy a Medford, if you're gonna go and, and get one of those big crazy honking things. The DPT is, in my experience, it made with the exact same quality as like the Marauder and even the Praetorian. It just isn't quite as popular. So we don't see the price hike, right? Now, so for some of these special versions, you might pay a little bit more, but you know, these get way down into the mid 500s, especially if you find uh, more plain Jane versions. So make sure you take a look at those. <laughs> look at that. The Microtech, uh, what do they call it? Is it just called the SBD? The Urban Camo, still trying to find an Urban Camo stitch with the bronze uh, accents. I think those are long gone, um, but uh, absolutely uh, something that looks really cool. I've been tempted by that knife many times. I just wish the blade was a little bit longer, maybe an inch or two longer. Um, the 5 Max, we got to talk about this. Why did they do it? I don't know. I mean, is it does it even make sense to ask why? They have the Espada XL. They did it because they could do it. This thing is 
crazy. Perhaps the most overkill durable knife that they have created to date. I wish that they made this in all black and did their black coating uh, instead of this sort of black wash, but still very cool. Um, these are getting these are getting up there. Cold Steels and S35. I mean, it, this is huge, right? So part of the price is just the excess of materials. But Cold Steels are no no longer, you know, just like oh my gosh, wow, these are like you know fifty to hundred dollars better than the competition, right? And we still have to you know remember. There's going to be a lot of different opinions on that. These are made in Taiwan, not the USA, but also not China. A lot of people think Taiwan manufacturing and Chinese manufacturing cost the same. It doesn't. It costs a lot more in Taiwan than it does China. But we are definitely seeing price bumps on a lot of cold steel knives. Curiously, though, not all of them. I think mainly it's their newer models. Models like the AD10 and the AD... Where did that go? The AD15... Uh, those are still reasonably priced, and a lot of the other models in Cold Steel's line are, are reasonably priced. But if you like absolutely monstrous, like ultra durable knives, I mean, this this really is like about as durable as you're gonna get for a folding knife. That's 12 and a quarter inches with a five inch S35 VN blade at uh, 190 thousandths. So not a um toy i mean kind of it depends on what you're going to do with it but it, definitely a tool for sure so let's move on here and look at the next page uh we have apparently blue and black um live wires that's interesting we have some more towels if you go further back the launch 11 in white i didn't know that they did that what the heck is a havalon ready Interesting. I have never seen that before. We have some small Sabenz at 31s. Uh, those have been sitting there for just a bit. We have a red Combat Troid on Warncliffe. I definitely don't see too many of those. This Makora with the weathered red brute inlay is super cool. Man, I don't know if I'm ready to pay $513 for it, but it does look cool. A plain red Combat Troid on, um, also cool. I don't see too many of those. The Daytona, which is, eh, I don't know. Even, I can't even really identify exactly what it is about the Daytona that makes it special. But some Praetorian T's in S90V, some sculpted, some crazy stuff. If you're looking for a Praetorian T, they definitely have them. The Gentleman Jack, uh, again, one of the less expensive Medfords that are out there. We have, so let's talk about the best at Good Boy. The first one I got failed. The second one, which you guys haven't seen yet, and you probably won't see for a bit because it's scheduled to be uploaded here in a couple of weeks completely fine. It didn't have any issues and I was pretty hard on that test. So the newest version, which Bestech has assured me has been resolved, uh, is, is it's fine, right? So if you were interested in the good boy and you were scared off by my video, I still wanted to upload it and make sure that people knew what my experience was. But apparently that's either not a common issue or they have corrected it. So they sent me one that is absolutely fine. Um, Combat Troid on two-tone hell, is it a Hellraiser or Hellhound? No, it's not the Hell Hound. Is it the Hell? I can't remember. I, it's hard for me to remember all the different blade shapes. Combat Troid on Stormtrooper in white. That's really cool. We have a blacked out, partially serrated stitch. God, there's a ton of Combat Troid ons. That's really, yeah, that red one with the single edge is really tempting. I've been wanting to EDC a Combat Troid on, and I just have been kind of kicking around in my head, like, which version do I want? I have the, the special one with the crazy blade, but I, I just don't really want to. Um, carry it. This is interesting. I haven't seen anything from Melvin Lozada in years. And then all of a sudden, DLT announces that they're dropping new Lozada knives. Now, I always associate Melvin Lozada with ultra, ultra thick blades. If you guys get on Google and type in Melvin Lozada Rhino, you'll find some old pictures of hilariously thick knives. Hilariously thick. That is not the case with these. Now, I think these are still pretty beefy. Eight and a half inches, 196,000, so about a fifth of an inch. Still a beefy knife, for sure. Wow, that is beautiful. Um, but yeah, is this Chad Nichols? Yeah, Chad Nichols Boomerang Damascus. Honestly, not a bad price for an absolutely custom knife. Um, I have never handled his work. Look at that. Hold on. Is the pivot decorative? Oh, it is. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. We got a Damascus pivot collar. Damascus. Oh, no, Zerkatai. Oh, boy. Let me see. Let me see. Blade finish. Do they even talk about the fact that that's what that is? Hmm. I don't know if this is like black Timascus or if it's like some sort of weird soul authorship stuff. I have no idea. But 
that uh, that is definitely an interesting knife, and that's not a no name. You know, that's a name that's been around for a bit. I can't say that I know the complete history of uh, Melvin Lozada, but I do remember being very tempted by some stupidly overbuilt knives back in the day that were created by him. Um, we have the Lynch Northwest All Access Pass. Uh, those were super popular for a long time. I'm honestly really surprised that those are still sitting there. That's a lot of money to pay for a pry bar slash bottle opener. But if, you know, if you're into that stuff, then there you go. The PMP Grizzly in D2. Yes, I really wish, really, really wish that the PMP uh, Grizzly was not D2. I, I, I don't know what the appropriate blade steel for this would be. I mean, it would be great if it, I, I, honestly, I think S35VN would have gone over much better with people, preferably for a stainless option S45VN. I think ultimately for this geometry on a folding knife, which yeah, there's a million arguments to be made. I mean, what are you going to use it for? But something a little bit tougher, well, not tougher, D2 is plain tough. I, D2 is just, it's not a steel that we like to see for $350. But let me tell you, I have this knife here. And holy crap, is it nice. <laughs> it's so nice. This is in between the size of the Kodiak and the Alpha Beast. Um, honestly, they're doing a new run of the Alpha Beast in Magna Cut. So just to satisfy the enthusiast community who is undoubtedly the market for this stuff, right? I mean, if you're paying 350 bucks for a knife like this, you're a knife enthusiast, right? Whether or not you plan to use it is almost besides the point. We still want quality materials for the money or what we perceive to be the appropriate quality materials for the money and a proper heat treat, right? So D2 feels pretty lackluster for 350 bucks, but it is a nice knife. It is a very, very well-made knife, absolutely. So, you know, you're gonna kind of have to decide. If you've been looking for a big, chunky, overbuilt knife and everything seems to be super duper expensive like the Titano, well then, Maybe that'll be for you. I have a feeling maybe not for everybody, though. Uh, the PMP Titano is available for $600. I, I can't say I agree with that price tag, but, you know, if you want one of the most ridiculous things on the market right now, the Titano is definitely that. It, it is ridiculous. Um, and these come in a wide variety of different um, configurations. Uh, but you know, flamed, I'm, I'm almost certain that on the next page we're going to see, um, hold on. Uh, let me get back down there on the next page. We're probably going to see the black one and maybe bronze or something. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. No, the black one's not available. Okay. So we have the bronze titanium, blue titanium bead blasted with blue highlights or the standard bead blast. I guess these go as low as 550. Uh, would have been a lot happier to see that about a hundred bucks less, honestly, um, but hey, if you if you want it, it's there, and it is ridiculous, and it is super super well made. But you're gonna have to pay the price. That's just what it is. Moving on here, some i3 T's. These are wonderful. These are wonderful. I think this is probably aluminum. This is probably titanium. Yeah. Ah, these are so good, guys. So good for twenty one ninety nine. Uh, more Praetorian Genesis T's and S ninety V. A little bit less if you don't want the huge hunk and craziness of the Praetorian T. We have some, we have a slim midi there. Actually, a pretty nice looking slim midi. Moving on, moving on. We have a bunch of knives that I am either uninterested in or do not recognize. Let's keep going. More 187s. We have the Tactile Knife Co. Mavericks in red G10. Really wish those were a little less. I really. For G10, I just really, considering what the price is for their titanium ones, I really wish those were a little less. They are very nice. And as far as I understand, they have fixed the blade play issues. Let me know down in the description if you have picked one of those up and if that's true. We still have a Hydra right here. That's a single action OTF. And for me, it's a terrifying single action OTF. That's the one that I accidentally fired into my hand years ago. Uh... That wasn't fun. I've told that story many times. That was my fault. That was user error. But uh, every time I see that knife, that's what I think about. Moving on, some more Sabet. Oh, those are large 31s. There's some large 31 Tantos still sitting there, guys. So there you go. Uh, new Finch. I know, it's been a long time since I've checked out a Finch knife. I should definitely do that. I think we're actually back into the territory that I um, was in last time. So what I'd like to do is actually go back and check out real quick. Uh, we'll do, whoops, whoops. We want to go to restocks. So we're going to check out restocks here real quick. 
and take a look at what we've got. The Microtech Ultratech Clone Trooper handle. That's pretty cool. Uh, there's the Tau Diamond Textured Titanium. The Oh, they have the Black Injection Mold um, MSIs here. Actually, they have the Stonewashed and the Two-Tone. So those are there. Some more Kunwoos. Um, Microtech UTX85 Warhound or whatever. They have Parsley Serrated Glycons in stock. The Bailout, which is probably the most interesting Benchmade knife right now, but yeesh. You know, we come down on Benchmade for their pricing, you know, and a lot of it is completely justified, but when we compare, um, you know, the materials and the American Madeness to Microtech right now, we are essentially looking at the same deal as, you know, the MSI slash, um, uh, you know, uh, oh my gosh, the Stitch, right? Now, this is a smaller knife. It's a thinner knife, and I think a lot of times that you know, whether all of us like to admit it or not, that has a lot to do with how we perceive value on things. Um, but truthfully, the Microtechs are, they just feel better. They, they look better. They feel better. The overall execution just feels better. And Benchmade just, a lot of these knives, as nice as this is, it just doesn't feel as deserving of the price tag. Now, if they were to hit this thing at, you know, 225 or so, uh, maybe 235, I think it would, it would go down better. As it sits, though, the Tungsten Gray M4 is definitely going to be heat treated correctly. It's definitely going to be a more utilitarian and more convenient folding knife than the MSI or the Stitch. Um, and it will certainly be nice, right? And it is made in the USA. I think this is a better example of what Benchmade is capable of, uh, but certainly still not where most people feel like the price should be. Um, so that's my take on that. S35, oh no, those are three, no, that's S35 yen, then we have 3V. Oh, they do have a Glycon in stock that's just a plain edge. This is the exact one that I have, and it's very nice. Still plenty of 3V. If you've been looking for the 3V Demco 80 20.5s, they're here. I honestly didn't even know they went out of stock. The Cold Steel 8010 Tanto, which actually I did own that. I, I gave it to a buddy, um, but that's there. We still have a couple. So these were sold out, and then apparently now they're back in stock, so they must have had more. If you're looking for a titanium scale for your XM18 3.5-inch standard thickness and you like the Warthog look and the texturing, they have them here. Those are a lot of money. We had a discussion about how much they're charging for these scales. I want to be clear, I do think that hinder titanium scales are pretty high versus the competition. A lot of the competition is coming in lower and sometimes they do provide a couple of scales. Uh, so you're definitely paying a little bit of a premium there for the hinderer name. However, hinderer has not changed his price on these scales in about a decade. And really the only people who are going to be interested in these scales are people who have bought the actual hinder knives anyway. So this isn't really an everybody marketing thing, but I do agree with the price tag on these. As somebody who owns six full titanium XMs, yeah, that's always a little bit hard to choke down for sure. I think that's pretty much it. I think everything, they got the S30V Griptilian sheep's foot with this spidey hole in stock. I haven't seen that one for a bit. And there's also a Microtech SOCOM Elite manual. These are the USA made ones. That's a two-tone manual. Um, oh wait. Is it? Is this a manual? I can't believe this is sitting here. Yeah, okay, well, hey, if you're interested, uh, that's right, I can't imagine that'll stay in stock long. They have an auto one as well, right here. Uh, so yeah, I think that's gonna be pretty much it today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like I said, these pages will be listed right down in the description so you guys can check them out. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore, I'm sorry, leave a like. <laughs> If you like this video, leave a like. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, like I said, leave a like. Sorry, I don't know where I am in my outro. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.